Welcome back, internet friends. Today, I want to tell you a little bit about my experience when I worked at Tower Records. And I worked at Tower Records back in 2005 until about 2007, right before they went out of business. I really enjoyed this job and I had a lot of fun there. I got the job right after high school and I was pretty excited because I essentially worked at Jamba Juice in high school and I did that until two months before I was gonna graduate. I remember in February, I quit Jamba Juice and I wanted to finish school strong and enjoy the last few months as a senior in high school. But luckily I got a call right after I graduated from Tower Records and I was real excited to go get a job there. The guy that hired me, my first manager, he actually looked like Satan, like what you would imagine Satan or the devil would look like if he took human form. He had this dyed black Fu Manchu long type of mustache and then like super straight long black heavy metal hair but he was like pale white and chiseled face kind of he looked like the devil <laughs> it's hard to describe is even his eyebrows were pointy this guy hired me he was kind of a jerk and he ended up getting fired a little bit after i got there for sleeping around with other people from other stores that were not managers and then this new manager came in and she was a lot like if you imagined Depeche Mode's number one fan. It's just this girl with colorful hair and she was very sweet. That lady actually promoted me and made me a supervisor. And as a supervisor, I got to deal with all sorts of interesting stuff. I got to close on Saturdays, which basically meant I had to stay there till midnight and deal with a bunch of people trying to steal CDs in a slow store because we were really not busy ever on the weekends. CDs were going out of style at that time. People stole them so they could resell them. It was quite tragic. I remember just being there, hanging out with the guy in the camera room or on the floor, and we would basically just spend the night hunting for thieves. And we would catch like two or three thieves every night. Somebody trying to steal, you know, DVDs or box sets were worth a lot of money. One time, when I wasn't there, these three dudes came in and they had trash bags under their shirt. They whip out these trash bags at the box section of the DVDs and just start pouring all this stuff into the trash bags. And then they just ran out the store. Nobody stopped them or anything. And apparently the loss prevention didn't really get there in time to like do anything about it. This was a frequent problem with Tower Records. They had loss prevention, but it was kind of handicapped. Like they couldn't do their job, either being understaffed or certain company policies. There was a lot of theft that went on. One time I showed up to work and there was broken glass all over the entrance because some guy had thrown a brick through the front door so that he could steal a bunch of pornography. Even employees, there was a guy on his last day, this employee who was kind of fed up with the job, he took like $850 of the register's money and he got away with it clean. The procedure was you go to the count out room with the supervisor and whoever else was on the register and everyone enters the number of fives, tens, hundreds, twenties, ones, the number of each bill, you enter the quantity into the computer, you enter the receipt totals for each card, MasterCard, Discover, and then you get these pages printed out. You put the money and the receipts in the pages, you fold that up, put it in a bag, and that gets dropped in the safe. This guy did all of the count out stuff. He put the totals in the computer, he printed the sheets, and all he did was just very slyly take the cash and put it in his sweater pocket when he folded up the money. We, some, somehow he pocketed the cash and then just folded everything up, put it in the bag, and dropped it in the safe. Loss prevention wasn't able to get there until like several days later and the cameras reset. This guy got away Scott clean and there was no way to even prove that he did it because there was like three people in the count out room as well. This guy made off with 850 bucks. It was a slow record store and funny thing, just like Empire Records where they like glue a coin to the floor, I kid you not, we had a quarter super glued to the entrance of the store. I don't know what employee did it before me, but some guy long ago, super glued a quarter to the entrance of the floor. So every few minutes when someone would be leaving, they would be like, oh, and try to pick up a quarter that's stuck. There were a lot of funny things that went on 
in the store. We had a really cool culture. We were allowed to wear pretty much whatever we want. We all had kind of interesting styles, myself included back then. This is what I look like. The employees there were really cool and I made some really good friends. There was a couple colorful characters, let's call them. Basically, we had a certain expert or person that fit a style for each type of music. So we had two older guys that worked in the classical and jazz section. I mean, these were older guys. They were in their late 70s. They were pretty much retired, but they came in to talk to people about music or to organize the section. We had a heavy metal guy. We had someone that liked the 80s, a manager. We had... Me, I was kind of like the indie rock guy who also liked electronic music. Then we got like an electronic music guy. So each category of music, we had someone. Heavy metal guy was quite a colorful character. We had this dude and he was infamous for not showing up. Or when he was there, he'd just be behind the counter just pretending to do stuff. Like flipping through his sidekick. We all had sidekicks back then. We didn't have iPhones. If you were lucky, you had a sidekick. So he was on MySpace on his sidekick. Stuff would happen where this guy would call me up. He'd be an hour late for his shift. And I'd get a phone call at the store. Be like, hey, Serge, it's me. I'm in Las Vegas. I'm in jail. And he'd say, yeah, do you think the boss is going to be cool with me missing like the next two shifts? I'm definitely going to make it by Friday. But I'm stuck here in jail for a couple days. I kid you not, that was the kind of person we hired sometimes. We did have a big problem with homeless people. There was a lot of homeless people that came into the store just to linger. There was a dumpster where one guy would sleep out there and he would defecate and then step in his own caca. He would like try to scrape it off his shoe against the walls. So you would go to throw out the trash and you would just see this whole scenario like as if you were a detective figuring it out. Like you see the poo smeared and then you'd see poo on the ground with like a boot print and you see cardboard and you like a pee bottle and an empty beer bottle. You put it all together <laughs> and you could figure out what this guy had done. There was stuff with that all the time. Homeless people making the store just not attractive and difficult as an employee. We had a guy that would just come in the porn section. He was a big smelly guy huge thick dirty dreadlocks that were just natural from never watching his hair and he would stand in the porn section for like three or four hours and just look through everything he would just stare at it and look at all the porn magazines everything he could and then he would leave but he would be there all night and he smelled like a grenade of stink bomb so people wouldn't go in that section of the store you know, he was like a repellent. We have to kick him out sometimes and say, sir, you're not buying anything. Okay, one homeless lady, she came in every Friday and Saturday night. We had the free listening stations with her headphones and you could just listen to all this new music or whatever we were promoting. And I kid you not, this lady listened to every single CD in every headset station. She would just go from one to the next to the next and she would dance like it was the craziest club or, or workout music you'd ever heard. This lady would put on her headphones and just jam out like as hard as she could, man. Pouring sweat, just dancing her butt off, man. She was having such a good time. And she would do this like for hours. She'd be there all night, every weekend. We would see her there. <laughs> I don't know if she was high. For her sake, I hope she was. That sounds like a fun way to spend your weekend if you're a homeless person. I realized Homeless people, they value the simple thing of listening to music, right? Homeless people will go somewhere where there's music playing. At least at this time, there wasn't an iPhone given away to any homeless person who applied for it. So it was quite a valuable thing to have music. These homeless people congregated at the record store just to be able to listen to music for free. And while they were a bit of a struggle to deal with sometimes, I kind of like that the record store was a place of free music if you wanted to listen to these listening stations and just hang out. It was a very cool place inside. We had all sorts of like movie culture stuff, like the toys for movies were really cool. And it was very awesome if you liked pop culture, movie culture, and like weird B movies and sci-fi movies and they had all these TV box sets. It was just, it was cool, man. They played a lot of music. I got tons of free demo music 
they would give us CDs and punch out the barcode and say, after this date, you could take whatever of this pile home. So I remember discovering bands, like I discovered Paramore way before they ever got big because I got a demo. I did get free magazines. Every month or so when the old magazine would be finished, they would rip the cover off, send that cover in, and then they would give the magazine to the employee. So I got like unlimited free sports magazines, anime magazines, music, whatever I wanted. And the last part I want to tell you about is like the Ticketmaster part. So the cool Depeche Mode manager lady, she promoted me to supervisor. And one of the tasks a supervisor has to deal with is you have to deal with Ticketmaster while you're there. If people come and they want tickets, you're the guy. Back then, everyone got their stuff with Ticketmaster. The smart people were doing it online, but it was still more common to just go to a, a Ticketmaster outlet like Tower Records or in the mall. People would come, they would ask me to bust out all the maps of the different stadiums and try to sell them like season tickets for baseball seats and get them the best deal. Like I was some kind of ticket broker. It was kind of fun, but you dealt with a lot of kind of rude people in that world of Ticketmaster, especially when there was big ticket events going on. For example, the K-Rock Weenie Roast, K-Rock Acoustic Christmases, those were insane. Whenever there was like a really big concert that people wanted tickets to, there was just a couple hundred people camping out front. We would get there early, I would get the thing set up, and I'd be waiting, ready to go. It's like having one person trying to buy tickets for an entire room full of people. That's what it was like for me. So I'm the one guy on the Ticketmaster computer, and the first three people in line, I would punch it out. You just get the first available. Sorry, bro. Just give them whatever seats came up in the computer. Da -da 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 -da. Print tickets. There you go. Da -da 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 -da. Within like five minutes, I'd done three or four people's transactions. The computer would say there's nothing left. We're sorry, no more tickets are available. I would keep trying, no more tickets are available. I would have like 150 people that camped overnight staring at me in the face with this blank stare. Are you serious? You mean they're already sold out? And I would say, you guys, look at it. I'm sorry, I'm doing the best I can, but the system says they're sold out and these people would want to kill me. Luckily, no one ever fought me. Sometimes I was able to get tickets like a few minutes, a half hour after they went on sale, a few more would pop up, but the whole Ticketmaster thing was a nightmare. There was a cool aspect though, is that whenever there was a big concert around of stuff that I liked, at the time I actually liked the raves that were first starting. There was like how sweet it is and audiotistic and a lot of those tickets, the only way you could get them was either through like a EDM record store, which it wasn't even called EDM back then. It was like a trance DJ house store or through like a Tower Records or some smoke shop sold them. But we carried rave tickets and concert tickets. So everyone would kind of come and visit me at my work when they were buying the tickets to their concerts. And I would get to know what's going on and be like, oh, are you going to such and such? And I'd be like, oh man, I didn't know that was going on, sweet. So I got to be kind of on the inside with all the shows going on. I knew when all the big things were going on sale as a Ticketmaster Tower Records guy. I actually quit the job in 2007, about May of 2007, and it was over an ultimatum, a scheduling problem, that was it. I was cool with the company on every other terms, I liked the job, but I had basically told a girl that was two years younger than me that I was going to be her prom date. And this was in May. So it was the end of the year when proms are. I requested it off like months in advance. I got some guy to cover me and then he bailed last minute. And I said it was on him. They said I had to come in. They would not let me have that girl's prom night off. And I told them I promised this girl I would go with her to prom. I was like 20 and I was going to an 18 year old's prom. And they said I couldn't do it. So I said, I gotta quit then. Or like, this is my last day. If you're going to fire me over this, then so be it. And they ended up, you know, saying goodbye. And that was okay. I kind of learned at that point to walk away from something and make a choice. And I chose to stand behind my word. So I'm proud of that. That about wraps up my stories from my days at Tower Records. If you enjoyed them, you found them funny or entertaining, go ahead and smash that like button. If you worked at Tower Records in the past or you ever missed that place, go ahead and leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, God bless, and as always, just have a great day.